I just sold TDS for an 80% gain, and I'm not looking back. Share prices have risen well over 100% since Friday after the company announced it's considering selling US Cellular, one of telephone data system subsidiary companies, and I'm not confident about the long-term outlook of the business. The company admits it's not able to compete with other cellular providers like AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. So it looks like US Cellular will be absorbed by one of these telecom behemoths sometime in the next couple years. Investors went wild at the news, sending both US Cellular stock and TDS soaring Friday morning and well into the early part of this week. At the same time, TDS released its Q2 earnings report and missed estimates across the board. Revenues were more than 2% less than expected and earnings missed estimates by over 300%. Normally this results in a price dip, but the news around US Cellular's potential sale sent the stock skyrocketing instead. Pair that with an upgraded outlook by one of JP Morgan's analysts, and it's not surprising we saw share prices as high as $17 on Tuesday. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made such a huge capital gain on TDS and why I'm not buying back in anytime soon. First off, I think the huge share price spike is overblown hype. The company announced on Friday it's considering strategic alternatives to US Cellular. They didn't come right out and say they were going to sell the business. The fact that the announcement came on the same day as a flagging earnings report is suspicious to me. Pair that with a concurrent upgrade from a single financial analyst at JP Morgan, spouting ridiculous price estimates over $35 per share, and red flags are being thrown all over the place. We haven't seen a $35 share price since early 2019. Why should we believe selling a failing business line will allow TDS to pump back up to those levels? The only other times we've seen share price spikes this intense was back in February of 2021 when earnings reported 200% higher than estimates, and in August 2020 when earnings were 164% higher than estimates. Why on earth are we seeing an overnight share price increase of more than 100% when earnings are nearly 350% lower than expected? Year-to-date, TDS has declined over 60%. The stock's 200 period moving average has been trending downward in all but four months over the past three years. I don't think this short spike is justified and we'll likely see the price dip back down to support at $7 per share very soon. Over the past five years, financial metrics have been trending down for TDS. Net and operating income have seen double digit declines since 2018 and the company has posted negative earnings three of the past four quarters. Operating cash flow has been trending down at almost 1.5% per year, despite a boost in Q2 of $468 million. Free cash flow is also in deep trouble, trending down at 24% per year with negative annual free cash flow two of the past five years. Capital expenditures have seen huge increases, topping out at $2.5 billion in 2021 and remaining elevated between $270 and $380 million per quarter. These expenses have resulted in an explosion of debt. Long-term debt has more than doubled from $2.42 billion in 2018 to nearly $5 billion in 2023. Total liabilities has also increased from $4.5 billion in 2018 to almost $8 billion in 2023. Many may argue that selling US Cellular will allow TDS to focus on its other primary business segment, TDS Telecom. This might be a legitimate argument if that business line was doing well. Cutting the dead weight of US Cellular and directing all attention and energy to a thriving business would make sense, except TDS Telecom is also a failing business. Let's see how the subsidiary business is doing. When TDS sells US Cellular, almost their entire business will be reliant on TDS Telecom for revenue. TDS Telecom has posted year-over-year -year operating income decline 9 of the past 14 quarters, and year-over-year -year net income has declined 10 of the past 14 quarters. Operating income has declined 77% since 2019 on a rolling six-month basis, and net income has declined 73% over the same time frame. Cash flow data for the TDS Telecom segment isn't available, but I'd bet that a similar trend can be found in the cash flow metrics as well. Needless to say, I'm not too optimistic about the long-term outlook of TDS Telecom. Historically, US Cellular has made up about two-thirds of telephone data system's total income. Removing this income puts significant strain on their ability to continue paying dividends at the current rate, especially when you consider the fact that TDS is already paying dividends with negative free cash flow and dwindling net income. Net income payout ratios have been steadily increasing over the past three years, topping out at almost 250% in 2022. Removing almost 70% of their total income will cause these ratios to remain elevated and stress the company's cash flow statement moving forward. The sale of US Cellular will put a huge amount of cash on the books for TDS. There's no telling how much the business will go for, but a conservative estimate would be its pre-spike market capitalization of $1.5 billion. TDS currently owns 82% of US Cellular, so they would receive a windfall of approximately $1.2 billion. Let's assume 25% of this capital will go towards paying any outstanding debts related to the US Cellular acquisition, and 25% would go towards growing the TDS Telecom business line. This leaves about $600 million to pay dividends to shareholders. 
In 2022, TDS paid a total of $151 million in cash dividends, meaning TDS only has about four years of runway to grow their TDS Telecom business line by more than four times to match their current US cellular revenue. That's a tall order, one that I don't think this flagging business is up for. I sold TDS for several reasons. I just outlined quite a few, but I was also sitting on some pretty handsome unrealized gains as of Wednesday morning. I bought TDS at around $9.40 per share and sold at $16.60 per share, netting a 77% capital gain in the process. I made a video a while back analyzing TDS's dividend and decided to buy based on some pretty poor assumptions. Taking a closer look into their financials, I realized I made a mistake. Although I don't believe the massive price growth over the past few days is permanent or sustainable, I'm happy it allowed me to avoid some capital losses and give me some extra cash to buy better stocks I've identified in the meantime. One such stock is Realty Income, which is currently trading at a 20% discount off their 2020 high. The initial yield is about 15% higher than their 5-year average, and I'm very optimistic about the long-term outlook of the company. Click the video card here or the link in the description to check out our analysis of this stock. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, stay safe and take it easy.